and welcome to Stocks, Bangers and Crash in another action-packed programme. This week we feature two litre saloons, some great bangers, a mini race for 10 to 16 year olds, but first, here are some banger rods. Right, here we are then, back at the number one track in Norfolk, uh, Kings Lane, where uh, all the action takes place. Now it's the Parsons there, uh, just uh, getting into the swing of things, literally with a 360 degree spin. Super banger rods are what are on the menu here. And uh, the super banger odds are uh, fairly similar to normal banger odds, but uh, some important differences, Richard. Yes, the size of the car is unlimited in this class, and uh, all the banger rod preparations are in place as before. The uh, safety roll cage, the door protection bar, the radiator is still in place, but obviously they can use any size car, the unlimited CC, and the weight of the car doesn't matter either. So we see the bigger Jaguars and the Granadas and on the track in this formula. Right, and uh, the number one driver in this four is Sean Stark at Treble 8. He started this race at the very, very back of the grid, and amazingly, in only two laps, he's got up to second place. That's a uh, pretty good driving, don't you think? Yes, he certainly is. He's looking now to close on the race lead at 117 Grand Jacobs. He's uh, at the head of affairs, and Sean will no doubt be looking to challenge Graham as the race progresses. Not as many cars on track as we would normally see. There's only about eight to nine cars out there today, but uh, some pretty good drivers out there and some pretty entertaining stuff uh, we're looking for as well. There's Sean Stark in treble eight, currently in second place in this race. The number one driver in Super Banger Odds, the current points champion. Graham Jacobs is the man he's trying to catch. He just goes up the inside of a back marker there, Basil. Uh, Jacobs, as you see, currently about three or four car lengths ahead and here comes Graham Jacobs now let's see how he takes the bend takes it uh, nice and uh, controlled and easy there nice and uh, sideways and uh, Sean Stark here really throwing the old uh, Granada out of his with the aerofoil as he desperately tries to make up that distance yes he's closing now on the 117 car 270 there goes for a full 360 spin he'll be looking to rejoin the race keep looking up to the head of affairs there and it's still 117 Graham Jacobs who is leading. Problems there for Basil again in this 705 car. The Granada limousine, the one with the Union Jack on the roof takes him out towards the fence but now look at these two poles. Sean Stark now looking to get on terms with Graham Jacobs in 117. Not uh, too much of this race to go now and in fact uh, Stark there tries to get up the inside of Jacobs. Yes Sean will be looking to get past Graham as they go round here. It's going to be a sprint to the line. Checkered flag at the ready. Jacobs is putting up one hell of a fight. And the checkered flag is prepared. Who's it going to be? Well, this one's going to be close. It looks like it could be Stark around the outside. It is. It's Sean Stark who takes the checkered flag. And let's see his victory routine down there on the start finish line. So, Sean with his traditional cartwheel. That's his trademark. And I think Catherine is down there on the start finish line. She's going to grab a word with Sean. Oh, that's such a cool little trick. Where'd you learn that? It's a thing I've been doing now for about a year and a half now, and every time I won, I just did a cartwheel. Because I, I, I went for a phase, I didn't win for about three years. So what I did was, um, when I did finally win, I was that excited, I did a cartwheel, and it's stuck me ever since. Every time I do, I win now. That says to me, will you please do a cartwheel? So now I just always do a cartwheel. You were falling on your head when you did a cartwheel? No, yeah, but the track gets a bit slippery sometimes. And sometimes yeah, too, right? It <laughs> might go wrong one day, but hopefully not. <laughs> So now we move over to the two litre National Saloon stock cars, a very big grid of cars here at the Norfolk Arena and we're looking to see who will come out on top on this one Paul. Yeah, as well as you say, a big big grid of cars so it's a bit difficult to tell who uh, will do the winning but uh, normally you have your uh, money on one of the star men but such a big grid of cars, thanks to the lower grade it will spring a surprise. Yes, the green flag goes down and they're underway now, Andy Mean taking a very wide line there, clips the safety barrier but he's A-OK and he's on his way. Paul Tuppen there just going through in the orange coloured number two car. So this big grid of cars fighting its way around this circuit, which has been watered in the early stages just to keep the dust at bay. Fred Powell there getting spun around. As the cars come round over the start finish line, we'll try and pick out your race leader. Well, I think we've just uh, gone through reaching a big grid of cars. Keep your eyes on the starter, of course, when you're at the track, find out exactly who is leading the way. But plenty of action in this one. There's a crowd in there involved in a bit. Uh, of a spin, she's uh, taken out. Yes, there we see Fred Powell in 417. It looks as though Fred is the early leader. Derek Howard there in second spot in car number three. Andy Santry there going well in 369. Problems again for Lizzie Crowden in the number 84 car. As Andy Mean takes a wide line to avoid the spinning 84 car. So Derek Howard in trouble in number three and Andrew Parrott in 150. 
David Aldous, we saw him the other week at Sheffield taking a hat-trick of victories. Going well here at the Norfolk Arena this afternoon. Yes, it looks like Fred Powell could well be the race leader. The white top going really, really well in the four and seven car. But, uh, in fact, it looks as if Darren Bannock could now be up there in five, one, two after a fairly hectic lap. Yes, Paul Tuppen there taking a wide line in the number two car. Mark Gilbert in 32. Steve Webster in 401. Derek Hare was up and running once again in the number three car. There's the world champion, 368 with the gold roof. That's Steve Santry having a good battle there with Paul Licorice in the number 51 car. So these top drivers certainly mixing it. Horry Barnes there rejoining the racing car number six. Horry has been racing since 1954. And he's indeed actually 74 years of age, would you believe, and still going strong in stock car racing. Wayne Beckham there gets uh, spun around and gets clouted out of the way by uh, Steve Sanchez. Really doesn't have time to mess around with the Peckham car. The rest of them flying on through though. Chris Murphy always goes well here at Kings Lane in 807 and uh, he could well be up there challenging for the lead very shortly. Yes, Neil Payne there in 312 rejoining the action. As you can see from the shot down the home straight, the speeds have increased now, the track's drying out nicely and these two litre saloon stock cars certainly move well around this Norfolk arena. There we see the world champion Steve Santry going through, David Alders in 499, Sean Webster in 402 from Sheffield. There's lady racer Lizzie Crowden. So the car's coming through, lots of bumper work being exchanged as these drivers try to make ground through the grid. There we see Chris Murphy, our race leader in 807. Fred Powell in 417 in front of him. Darren Barnett's there in 512. The rest of them trying to get on terms with these leading bunch. Yeah, sliding around at a great old speed. Uh, really do have to, to experience the true sensation of two and slim racing. Paul Tuppen there, just uh, managing to avoid being taken out by Paul Lee, Christian 51. Old problems there for Fred Powell. He hits the marker tyre and puts the car on his roof. I think we'll have a race caution. There is the other angle. 417 Fred Powell up and over he goes on his roof. The yellow flags will come out. So indeed they do. The yellow flags there from the start marshal, Helen Kalita. And we'll bring the race down to single file at walking pace. And the safety marshal there onto the circuit. First A team down there to make sure Fred's okay. Cars all slowed down. They'll be relined up in single file in the order they were at the time of the stoppage. Indeed, Fred gets himself out of the car and he's soon keen to get the car back on its wheels but of course it is the cause of the stoppage and he will not be able to go in the rerun. I'll get the cars lined up with the leader at the front, indeed it's Chris Crowden Murphy in the 807 car that will lead them away on the slow rolling lap, easy race leader and the cars lined up as they were on track at the time of the stoppage behind. Yes they go around on the rolling lap, Darren Barnett currently second in 512 but a big worry for them all, Mark Wybra third place in 64. Yes, the green flag goes down and Darren Barnett straight away forces away past Chris Cronin Murphy. Mark Wybra there for good measure. Problems behind there for Mark Gilbert in 32. He's getting bounced around as Mark Wybra looks to dive up the inside in 64. But he's still back behind these two leading yellow top drivers, 807 and 512. The uh, rest of the pack can fly on through. Barnett and Murphy now battling for the lead in 512. And 807, Wybra looking to pick up any pieces in 64. Yes, Wybra there losing a little bit of ground. He got hooked up temporarily there. So we're looking for this leader as they come down there into the turn. 64, Mark Wybra. There we see Darren Barnett in 512, 807, Chris Crowden Murphy. And he got, dives up the inside with Barnett. But Barnett's gone, 512. Darren Barnett, he was in a good place there, but he spun by the wayside, as has Paul Licorice in the number 51 car. It's 8.07 your leader. Form past the uh, start finish line. Helen Kalita there giving hand signals to indicate to the drivers who is in what position within the top five. Yes, Carl uh, met Wyber there momentarily took the lead, but Chris uh, Murphy came back straight away at him, and now Murphy leads and has a few car lengths advantage. Yes, he's gone up the inside there of the back marking 512 car. As they come round onto the home straight once again, 8.07 in the lead. Wybra now up to second in 64. And uh, Wybra, a very, very quick driver around Kings, and will be doing everything he can to catch the Chris Murphy car over the remaining three laps. Yes, the race now in its closing stages as they come through. 8.07, your leader, Wybra. Can he get on turn with the 8.07 car as they go very quickly around this circuit? But there's a bit of a gap there, and in the closing stages, Paul, he's going to struggle to get on turns with Chris Crowden Murphy, and he's very quick around Kings Lynn. Yes, Crowder Murphy there doing really, really well. 
and uh, not the Lyra Caro anymore until they took the lead and that could well have been a deciding move in this race. Yes, that's right. So why we're looking to get on terms with 807 Chris Croden and Murphy. Down the back straight he goes. Time now running out for Wyber in the 64 car if he's going to try and make any headway into this lead of Chris Crone and Murphy. The time is running out. And indeed, the checker flag has gone down, so 807 takes the victory. So we'll get the rest of the cars over the start finish line. The race is still in progress. They're all fighting for the minor position. Indeed, we've got a big scrap. Down here and the Scotsman 213, Dougie Wilson clips the marker tie just like Fred Powell did and over he goes onto his roof. Right, here we go rolling then for the European Championship, our first visit to Skegness Stadium. So here we are now at the seaside. Green flag goes down from Helen Kalita, the UK's number one star marshal there. And the bangers go roaring into action. Jeremy Nichols there, the defending champion in 163, leads them away from the pole position start, but goes a little bit wide. Some big names out in this one, the uh, blue, white and red cars, all representative of the Brighton Bears, which are a big team in banger racing. Here we go then, Pete Winter is uh, one of the pre-race favourites for this one in Carnot Brains 11. We've already seen him this series take some stormy victories around the country. Can he add the European title to his big list, do you think, Richard? Well, there's certainly some big competition out there for Pete. There's some very good drivers there. Some very nicely prepared cars here at Skegness today. Some very nice assignment cars. See Jeremy Nichols there in 163, James Medley in 920 as they go through. The Brighton Bears, as you previously said, very smart cars. And indeed, the one there from 307, John Joe Cunningham, he's just gone through past the start finish line. Pete Winter makes his way around. He's looking to catch. Alan Speedy Reid in the very smart Jaguar XJS. And problems there for Jeremy Nichols and James Medley. They're not going to win this one, Paul. No, the defending champion's gone. That's Jeremy Nichols in 163. So it looks like a new champion is on the cards in this race. Currently, Alan Speedy Reid leads the way in the 88 car. A very, very smart looking Jaguar. And as you've already said, Richard, Pete Winter second in 811. And Pete Winter has been storming around the showways this season in an absolutely outstanding form. Is something that Alan Reid will be more than aware of in the 88 car. Yes, Alan looking to take advantage, takes the wide line there, and he's allowed Pete Winter to get on terms with the 88 car. So, uh, 88, Alan Speedy Reid, very nicely prepared car there, super sign writing on the card. Alan, a bit of a Jaguar specialist when it comes to banger racing, he likes his Jaguars, particularly the XJS model that we see him racing here today. Pete Winter throws the car sideways into the turn, he's in hot pursuit of. 88 Allen Speedy Reid, plenty of action further back down the grid as well. Yes, indeed, um, this uh, race, perhaps we'll see more action from the Euro a bit later on in the series. The title races, everybody's more interested in winning the title at the minute, particularly if you're an 88 driver or an 811 driver. Currently, it's Speedy who leads in 88, but Pete Winter is catching in 811. Yes, he's certainly on terms now with the 88 car. Good battle between these two, there may be some changes as we go through. Now Pete Winter looking to get on the inside of 88. Alan Speedy Reid, I don't know if he's going to stay there, Paul, do you? Well, Alan Reid will no doubt try and take uh, the lead back if he can do. He'll only get one opportunity to do that. So these two having a great battle. Correct past the 88 car there as he goes round the turn and onto the back straight. Jeremy Nichols' back marking car in front of Pete Winter. He'll be looking to get past the back marker and indeed take him out of the running if he can to not hold his progress up as he makes his way through this grid. Alan Speedy Reid still there in second in 88. Yes, uh, Pete Winter now though starting to uh, put a bit of distance between himself and the 88 car. And uh, Pete Winter on his way, could well be on his way to adding yet another title to the many titles he's won this year so far. Pete Winter in 8-11, probably laying claim now to be one of the country's top banger drivers, if not the top uh, banger driver in the UK with the amount of silverware he's won around the country this year. Do you think he's going to add another title, Richard? Well, he's looking the favourite for this one at the moment. Very nice style of driving Pete has around this shale circuit. Puts the car in sideways into the corner and power slides the car around the turn. You'll see Pete working away at the wheel as he makes his way around the circuit. He's finding the gaps, getting past the back markers. Very accomplished driver in this formula. Alan Reid uh, hasn't given up the ghost yet. He's uh, perhaps three or four car lengths behind, but uh, any mistake 
that uh, Pete makes. Anyway, he gets held up by any map markers and Speedy will be there to pounce in the 88 car. Yes, we see Jeremy Nichols there in 163. He makes his way round onto the back straight. We saw him lose some ground earlier on. Pete Winter there, a race leader, going past the back marking 173 Ray Sharrod car. Two laps to go for Pete Winter as he goes down the home straight. But can Alan Speedy Ray get back on terms? He's falling a little bit too far back, I think, now, Paul. Well, it's going to take uh, mechanical problems or somebody holding up the 811 car for 88 to get back on terms, I think. As you see, he uh, slides into turns three and four there. Just one lap to go, the last lap now for Pete Winter in 811. He goes down the home straight. He's going to throw this one sideways around the bend. Indeed, he does. Moves up the inside of one of the Brighton Bears. Powers his way down the back straight now for the final time. Into the final bend he goes, and it's going to be a win here for the driver from Hull, P. Winter, in 8-11. Uh, I started off uh, on the second row of the grid, which is on the outside, which is, uh, I like it on the outside, and uh, I just thought go for the win. I didn't do a lot of crashing, but uh, it was the title race, so I can crash it in the rest of the races. <laughs> Was it a pretty straightforward race? For yeah, it was quite straightforward. Usually there's a lot more crashing than that and, you know, a lot more pile-ups to get through. But uh, it just sort of went to plan, as you would say. So here we go now with the junior mini stocks formula. All these drivers aged between 10 to 16 years of age and this is very much the breeding ground of the stars of tomorrow. A lot of the big names, Paul, in the senior formula certainly started their racing careers in the mini stocks formula. Indeed they did. Many, many to count on. But a championship here for the mini stocks, all aged between 10 and 16, as you say. Green flag goes down and Timmy Aldridge, one of the most successful drivers in this formula, creeps off into the lead. Yes, he's certainly one of the top men around this Sheffield circuit and already you can see the advantage that he's pulled on the rest of the grid. Chris Hodgson giving chase in 191. And also we see Craig Utley and Daniel Johnson in that leading bunch. So Timmy Aldridge looks so he's pulled away, but look at the battle for the minor places as they come through. Problems there for Triple Six. He gets spun around onto the infield. But yeah. he's going well, is Aldridge in 515. Indeed he is. He's uh, pulling well away here. And to be honest, we could well only be on the second lap of this race, but uh, unless something quite major happens to Aldridge, you already cannot see anybody catch him. That's right, well this formula is contact racing just like the senior formulas, but there are modifications done to these minis to make them safer, as you can see the driver's actually sat in the centre of the car park. That's correct, just to keep him away from the fence, but uh, the most amazing thing of course about the minis is the age of the drivers, I mean these drivers are hurtling around this track, not one of them is even old enough to take a driving lesson yet. So uh, most of these drivers still five or six uh, years away from being able to go onto the road legally and just look at the speed they go around, it really is quite amazing. Yes, there's quite brilliant drivers and they will race in this formula for a number of years and gain experience on the short ovals and then go forward onto the big uh, open wheel stock cars perhaps or saloon stock cars. Indeed, uh, 515, uh, Timmy Aldridge, no doubt a fan of Formula 1 Stock Car National Points Champion Junior Wayman, who also raced under the 515 number. And of course, uh, Junior Wayman, one of the many drivers who started off in this formula. Well, that's right, well, the 515 car certainly going very well in this one. Chris Hodgson there in second in 191. The flashing lights on top of the car denoting superstar status. He's in that second spot, Craig Utley in third in 489. But just look at this advantage that Aldridge has pulled away in 5-1-5 but they're not going to get near him, are they, Paul? Well, I don't think so at the minute, but uh, the barrel for second is uh, certainly quite interesting. As you say, Craig Utley in 4 8 nine, sec in third place and Daniel Johnson fourth in car number 3 8 3. Both those drivers are actually sons of current Formula 1 drivers. Yes, you often find that, that the, uh, the sons of the Formula 1 drivers they can't just sit there and watch their fathers racing in the senior formulas. They want to have a go themselves and this is ideal opportunity for the youngsters to have a go around the short oval, contact racing and it's, it's good experience for them. So you see Timmy Aldridge there going around onto the back straight, he's got a nice lead and looking hot favour to take this Northern Championship. But the uh, scrap for the minor places is getting interesting Paul. Indeed it is very very interesting there but here we have Aldridge, he's absolutely flying around the circuit. He's uh, coming up now to lap the 73 car of uh, Chris Cowley, the son of another Formula 1 driver, Formula 73, Rob Cowley. But uh, Aldridge is uh, flying here. He's got over half a lap advantage now. Um, not at the minute uh, concentrating on the barrel for second, but that is where there's plenty of interest at the minute. But uh, Timmy Aldridge here giving us all a fine example of how these youngsters uh, drive a mini stocks around the ovals and the way Aldridge is uh, skiving his way 
through these mark markers is something going special. That's right, he's certainly taking a nice tidy line around this circuit and the back mark is not causing him too many problems. He makes his way down the home straight once again. We'll just see if he can hold on there to the chequered flag and take a well-deserved victory, perhaps. Yeah, well, as I said before, I've had to say on the second lap of this race, only mechanical problems or uh, somebody getting in Aldridge's way will surely deny the 515 car the chequered flag in this one. He is streets ahead of the rest of the grid and it's very very rare in over racing that you see a race as clear cut as this one. That's right well the race now getting towards its closing stages and uh, no doubt the battle for second, third and fourth is hotted up but they're not going to catch this 515 car. Tim Eld has driven an absolutely fantastic race, goes down the home straight once again. There is again Aldridge in 515 leading the way confidently dealing with uh, anything that's been thrown in his uh, wake in this race. There is the 5-on-5 car. Timmy Aldridge, not too many laps now for Aldridge to do this one. In fact, the checker flag, be prepared. It goes up, it comes down, and Aldridge wins it in 5-on-5. We hoped you enjoyed our TV program from the past. Please subscribe to our channel for more motorsport and other interesting programs.